another prediction video. Today we're doing Florida. Uh, if you're new to the channel, um, don't be afraid to hit the subscribe button below, the notification bell to get all the notifications when I do a new video. Uh, on this channel, we do a lot of football, constant daily football videos. Uh, also, throwing a little baseball here and there. And since it is the off season, we are going. I'm doing a little baseball videos also, but it's mostly going to be football videos on this channel. So again, don't be afraid afraid to hit the subscribe button and the like or dislike button. Like I said, today we're covering Florida. Last year they finished eight and two, uh, decent season. They won the SEC East. Uh, they lost in the Sugar Bowl to Oklahoma. It wasn't even the game wasn't even close, but. Dan Mullen came out after the game in a press conference and said that wasn't our team, which in my mind, in my, my eyes, that's very disrespectful to the team, the players that did play. Uh, we had a lot of players set out, uh, most, most notably Kyle Pitts, Kyle Trask. He didn't come out in the second half. It was just – it was the bad look overall. Um, like I said, they won the East. They lost to Alabama in SEC Championship. They kept it close for most of the game. But Alabama just um, pulled away in the end and won. I think it was by a touchdown, actually. Uh, for Florida, some of their key losses, most notably Kyle Trask, he's on to the NFL. Kyle Pitts, he's into the NFL. Uh, Kadarius Toney, also one of their best receivers last year, he is also in the NFL. And Trayvon Grimes, another good receiver for them, has also graduated and went to the NFL. So they're going to be – their offense ain't going to be as good as it was last year. They're going to have to rebuild, and which I think they will. But this year, I, I don't know. We'll, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, so their QB1 this year is going to be Emory Jones. Uh, he's from Georgia. He's a uh, he's 6'2", 211 pounds. He's a pretty, pretty, pretty decent built-looking quarterback. Uh, last year, they just used him as a come in and run the ball three or four yards here and there, you know, just to get a first down. Or if it was on the goal line, they would bring him in for a little maybe wildcat or just quarterback sneak. He wasn't really – he didn't really throw it a lot last year. He did go 18 for 32 for 220 yards, 221 yards. He had two touchdowns, one interception. So you really didn't see much from him last year as far as the passing game goes. Uh, he had 32 rushing attempts for 217 yards, six touchdowns on the on the ground. So, like I said, them were mostly just on the goal line, fourth and – or, you know, second and goal on the two, third and goal on the one, stuff like that. So, this year we're going to get to see uh, how good of a quarterback he really is. You know, he'll be an every down quarterback. So, we'll see how that goes. Um, as far as the running back situation goes, they have a returning uh, senior. His name is Damian Prince. Or Damian Pierce, I'm sorry. He's also from Georgia. He's a 5'10", 215, 215 pounds. Uh, last year he had 106 carries for 503 yards, four touchdowns, no fumbles. So, that, I mean, that's a plus. I mean, it's always good to have a running back that you can trust not to put it on the ground. <clears throat> uh, their best returning receiver is a junior by the name of Jacob Copeland. He's a good receiver. He had a couple. Uh, he had a good year last year. He's uh, six, he's six foot, two hundred two pounds. He had twenty three receptions for four hundred thirty five yards and three touchdowns. Not great, but a decent season. And that's their leading receiver. That's their best receiver coming back. So they lost a lot in the receiving core last year. A lot. Uh, on defense, they got a uh, I think it's a linebacker, Ventrell Miller. He led the team in tackles last year. He'll be returning. Um. Yeah, he's a he's a senior. He's six one, two hundred twenty six. He's a senior. Oh wow, he's a senior. So this will be his last year. Six one, two hundred twenty six pounds, and uh, he had eighty six tackles last year. That's that's really like that's really great. Uh, three and a half sacks. So he, he's a good player. Uh, so let's get to the uh, schedule prediction. So first up, you got Florida Atlantic. I mean, they're decent. I mean. They a couple years ago they had uh, Lane Kiffin as a head coach and they were they were decent. Last year they went five and four. Uh, they lost to Memphis in a bowl game. Uh, and they got a decent quarterback and Nick Toronti. Toronti, I don't know how to say that. I didn't name him, so it's not my job to. Uh, he had nine hundred and five yards last year for six with six touchdowns and three interceptions. Decent, decent, almost still throw for a thousand yards. 
Uh, there's not much to talk about this game. They're, Florida's going to win. They just that it, it just common sense. I mean, we might they Florida Atlantic might keep it close in the first or second quarter, but after a while, you know, Florida's just a better team. That's all there is to it. Uh, so that's a win. So they'll be one and zero going into USF. They're going at USF. USF. So that's different. Uh, that USF went one in what one in eight last year. So I don't see this game even being close. Florida win by four or five touchdowns. So I put them at two and zero going into the Alabama game. Now this game is a uh, rematch of last year's SEC championship game. This game is going to be interesting. It is going to be in Gainesville, so Florida got that going for them. Uh, as we know, Alabama last year went 13-0, and won the national championship against Ohio State. Uh, but Alabama did lose quite a bit on the offensive side of the ball. Mac Jones, NFL, Najee Harris, NFL, Devontae Sith, NFL, and Dylan Moses there, uh, one of their star defensive players. He is also on to the NFL. So, yes, this game is going to be, be hard for uh, Florida. It is at home, yes. Uh, but like I said, this is Alabama. And they just reload after year after year after year. Bryce Young is going to be their quarterback this year. Uh, he had a decent year last year. He, uh, he just had – he just went – he only threw 22 times, 13 for 22 for 156 yards, had one touchdown pass. But uh, – this game, I just figure, I mean, like I said, Alabama's going to reload. They're gonna, yes, they're sort of a rebuilding stage, but it's it's Alabama. So I got Alabama winning this game. Uh, so that's going to be Florida's first loss. That puts them at 2-1. and one. Going into an interesting game, uh, Tennessee. This game also is going to be in uh, Gainesville, Florida. Uh, Tennessee. They lost a lot of players to the transfer portal transport portal uh they finished three and seven last year tennessee that is uh their quarterback from last year he started out the year jared garantado he transferred to washington state uh he was a he was an okay quarterback he uh he just had he was just so inconsistent it's just, i don't know i wouldn't want him if it was me personally but uh, like I said, Tennessee finished three and seven last year. They and they're going this this year. Their quarterback is going to be uh, let's see, Harrison Bailey. I actually like this guy. I think he has somewhat of potential. Uh, last year he went forty eight for sixty eight for five hundred and seventy eight yards, four touchdowns, two interceptions. And they got a, um, a decent uh, running back too. I mean, he had well, not really. Their best route. I'm sorry, I misspoke. They are this year. They are gonna uh, be, I guess, reloading on the running back side of things. Last year, Jabari Small only had 26 attempts for 117 yards. He didn't have any touchdowns last year. So I just think I don't think Tennessee has the firepower to keep up with Florida this year. So I do. I am gonna give Florida the win on this game. That puts them at three and one. Next week they go to Kentucky. Now this game. Could be very interesting. Again, it is at Kentucky. More than likely, I think this game will shape up to be a night game in Kentucky. More than likely, I say a 7 o'clock game on SEC Network. Some, something like that. So this game could be tricky for Florida. Um, a lot of people have Kentucky being good, like really good this year as far as 8, 9, 10 games. Um, but for me, this this one, this one was tough. I, I fought over going back and forth. I mean – they're going to have Joey Gatewood as their quarterback, Kentucky, that is. Uh, last year he went 17 for 35 for 109 yards. Um, so, I mean, decent. But last year, I mean, one of their key, Kentucky's key losses is uh, Terry Wilson. Uh, some people called him turnover Terry, touchdown Terry, whatever you want to call him, but it don't matter anymore because he is gone. Kentucky also lost one of their, deep, their leader in tackles last year, Jamie and Davis. So Kentucky lost somewhat of some good players. Uh, they got a good running back returning. Uh, Chris Rodriguez Jr. He uh, had a 785 yards last year, 11 touchdowns. Wow, he's a junior, so they can have a good running game. But as far as this game go, I think this one's tough. You know, I'm going to go with Florida in this game, um, just because I think they'll have 
again, better players. I think uh, Florida, it'd be one of them games where it's close all the way through, and then I think in the fourth quarter, Florida just pull away, win by, let's say, seven to ten points. So that puts Florida at, let's see, one, two, three, four, four, and one. Going into Vanderbilt game, there's not much to talk about that game. Vanderbilt will just want to be able to catch up. Vanderbilt's going to have a tough year this year. So that puts Florida at five and one. They only lost being Alabama so far. But uh, here, here's where things get tough. They go uh, to LSU. They're going to play at LSU. More than likely, again, it's going to be a night game. I have Florida losing this game. Uh, LSU's going to be good. They got a good quarterback return to Miles Brennan. He had over 1,000 yards last year. Uh, 11 touchdowns, only three picks. So I think that's going to be the difference. I think LSU just has a better quarterback. Again, Emory Jones, we really don't know what he can do on an every down quarterback. We don't know that. So he could surprise us, but more than likely he's he's not going to be up to the challenge to make out for a, you know, an SEC title contending team. So I do have LSU winning that game. That is their – makes them Florida's second loss. So that will be, let's see, one, two, two and one, two, three and one, four and one, five and one, five and two. And then they go to Georgia. The uh, outdoor large, – largest outdoor cocktail party. I think that's what they call it. This game, again, I think Georgia is just – they got better players. I mean, we got one of the best uh, returning quarterbacks in SEC, JT Daniels. He only played – he came in halfway through the season last year and he just lit it up. He had over 1,000 yards, only played in like four games, four or five games. I think Georgia just – I think Georgia runs away with this game. I don't really think this game is going to be close. I think Georgia wins by at least two touchdowns. Uh, next game you got at South Carolina. Now this game, I think this is where Florida gets back on track. I think they win this game. Yes, it is at South Carolina, but I think – South Carolina, is, they're not good, really, at all. they got a first-year head coach in Shane Beamer. I, he is a really good recruiter. I do think he's going to get South Carolina back to close to where they used to be with Steve Spurrier. Uh, they're coming in. They're going to have a new quarterback. Uh, I wouldn't say a new quarterback, but, you know, a new starting quarterback. Their quarterback last year, Colin Hill, he's on to the uh, – he graduated. And they lost a big receiver South Carolina, that is. Shaw Smith, he's on to the NFL. So I don't think South Carolina, they're not going to be able to keep up with Florida. Florida's just going to have – just be a little much, little better that day. Uh, next week they play Stanford. There's not much to talk about there. Florida's just, Florida's just a better team overall. This, this is, is what it is. Uh, next you got Missouri. This game is at Missouri. Missouri last year they finished 5-5. Five and five. Uh their most notable key loss was their running back, Larry Roundtree, the third. He uh, he went on to the NFL. Uh, this game, I think it's going to be one of the back and forth games. I think it's going to be one of them games where it's, I don't know, 41 to 37. So one of them games, it's going to be back and forth. It's going to be high scoring, surprisingly. I think this is where Emory Jones, I think this is where Emory Jones really, I think he's going to have one of his best games. He just going to come out that day and just have a good game. But I think Missouri is going to be a little better that day, and I think Missouri pulls it out. Uh, so what's that bring them to now? Let's see. 1 0, 2 0, 2 1, 3 1, 4 1, 5 1, 5 2, 5 1, 5 2, 7 3, 6 3, 7 3, 7 4. So this going to the Florida State game, I predict that Florida will be 7 4. Playing Florida State. Now, this game is a rivalry game, so again, anything can happen, you know. But last year, Florida went two and six. They didn't really lose anybody like big. Uh, they got a good quarterback coming back, uh, Jordan Davis. He had over a thousand yards throwing last year, six touchdowns, but he did have six interceptions, so he has a turnover. He has an interception problem, you can say. Uh, let's see. Uh, this game, again, it is a rivalry game. It's going to be in Gainesville, so, you know, the Gainesville, the Swamp's going to be rocking that day. More than likely, it's going to be it's going to be on ABC like always, probably a 12 o'clock game, depending on the record. More than likely, it's going to be at, at 12 o'clock, so everybody's going to be waking up, eating breakfast, watching this game. But I do, uh, 
I do think Fargo will win this game. So that puts them at eight and four finishing. I have them finishing eight and four with losses to Alabama, LSU, Georgia, and at Missouri. Uh, so you know I could be wrong. I, Florida could beat Missouri, go nine and three. They could beat LSU. You know, go ten and two. We just don't know. But this is my predictions on the year. Florida will go eight and four, and just get in one of them mid-tier bowl games. And just look forward till next year. Again, like I said, I just think Emory Jones. This is first year being every down quarterback, so we really don't know what we're going to get out of Emory Jones. And I just really don't think he's going to be that good. Uh, you know, we don't know how their defense is going to be. You got Todd Grantham. A lot of people want him out. Well, we'll see. You know, they're third and Grantham. That's what they call it. So we never know what we're going to get. And they just, Florida lost a lot on offense. So it just, it's just going to be one of them years where it's going to be a little rough at times. But again, I have them going eight and four. And uh, that's going to do it for this video. Um, again, if y'all are new to the channel, Go ahead and hit that subscribe button below. Hit the like or dislike button. And if you would like, comment below and tell me what team you would do next. Uh, or tell me what team you want me to do next. Um, again, I'm going to do these prediction videos. Keep on doing them until the season starts. Uh, yeah, thank you all for watching. You all have a good day.